Hi, I'm Zane from Zanet Design, and I help small businesses like yours and designers to improve and to benefit from my 20 years experience. Today, we're looking at how to design logos. Particularly, we're gonna look at some tips on how to design a logo for your company. Now, maybe you've been uh, uh, thinking of branding or rebranding your company. I think it's fair to say that logos are amongst the most important parts of your company because it's the first thing people see when they come to your website. Maybe the first thing they see when they see a leaflet, a brochure, the business card, or maybe in the shop front. So the logo really stands out as being one of the most important parts of the identity of your branding and your company. Now, when people look at logos, they tend to think of it as they see a simplicity of a logo and think because of its simplicity, it must be simple to design. Well, here's one of my top tips for designing logos is don't think it's as easy and as simple as it perhaps initially could, could appear. Often there are so many variations and reiterations that go into a logo design before the final one's agreed between the client and the designer. So I'm gonna look at several tips that are gonna help you to, one, understand the process of how to design a logo, and secondly, will give you the real uh, understanding of uh, the requirements and the preparation that you need to have in your mind if you're uh, a business and you're wanting to have a new logo. Now, there are many that perhaps look at free logo designs, uh, software on the web, and they just think that's going to be good enough. Well, let me tell you that free logo design or just grabbing a logo from a, a website and then putting your name on it will not help grow your business. Why? Well, because most people will see it for what it is. They'll see the, the lack of professionalism that's in that design. Uh, maybe they'll notice that it's a logo they've seen in several other places. So don't have the same logo, have a bespoke one, and you'll then stand out. It will show you've had a proper design and that will last you for many years, if not the whole length of your business and its lifetime. So let's just run through a couple of tips here that I've written down that will really share some of my experience with you. So I mentioned here at the beginning that colors, fonts, uh, for the logo itself and the shapes chosen are essential. Now, why did I put that as one of the first things? Well, because branding and color is, is probably one of the most important parts of your design. Now you may see I've got several videos that show how logos and colors are used to deliberately help people think when they see a logo a certain way. For example, the McDonald logo is known for its, its bright yellow, uh, the yellow M, but also it uses red. Um, red is to suggest uh, speed, fast, and the yellow is more to do with, with food and hunger. So, uh, so that you can be fed in a, in a fast way. It's kind of inclined to come over through the colors used at McDonald's. Fast food, in other words, is what it's saying. So when you think about a logo, when you think about the colors being used, then you can see there's a lot more to it than meets the eye. Another thing I mentioned here is just the advantage of having SVG um, logo design. So you may notice in more recent times, uh, SVG is being used Basically, it means it's an image that no matter what the scale of the size of your logo, it'll always look clean and professional. Now, if you have logos designed in bitmap, which is like a Photoshop type of uh, uh, image, um, that would be like JPEGs, bitmap, uh, GIF, PNGs, PNG24. Um, they all kind of work really well for the web because web works in bitmap. When you start to scale things up, you'll need to consider that it needs then to have maybe a vector version. So SVG is excellent, but also things like PDFs um, 
AIs, the Illustrator files, uh, EPSs, um, they all kind of will scale up far greater. So if you're having a design of a, a logo, then you may want to consider having it designed so it's in vector version, not just bitmap version. That just future proofs it if in the future you want to make it larger and you want to scale the logo. Now with the complicated logos, um, they'll be very hard to make in, uh, in a format that scales well. So that's one of the reasons why simplicity is also one of the key things when it comes to logo design. So um, here I've got the example of my logo. Um, simplicity, what, is, what was behind the thinking of my logo? Well, let me just talk you through some of the things there that are behind it. Uh, firstly, the idea is, is that just a standard circle is easy enough to draw. As you can see, this isn't a standard circle. It's a circle that's been divided into four. And the idea of that is just to say that just when you think that it's predictable, something different happens. And that's the way I like to design. I like to design something that stands out as not being regular. So in this case, of course, we have one quarter of the circle pointing an opposite way. So standing out, being different with a logo is important. The other thing that's uh, an advantage of a logo with this type of simplicity is it's easy enough to draw. So if I ask you now to go away after seeing this logo and to draw it, could you draw it? You probably could. So Zanet Design is the name of the company, but also you could just draw the fact that you've got these four quarters, knowing that the top left is the one that changes. The colours, well again with design it can be any form of colour. This colour palette is pretty much consistent with everything I do. Of course there are times when maybe I'll take away the colours and have it white, uh, and that again can stand out as being something different. But these are the primary colours I use, particularly the green on my website. Another thing you may not have noticed is actually uh, this forms a Z and a D. Now not everyone can see this, but if you see this as a D, so you get the idea that's the D for design, the Z, well this is as close as I could get to a Z in a sense if you take these lines here and it comes across, so you have this kind of Z, uh, kind of topologically speaking it's a Z, so Z, D, Zanet, design. So there's a lot of thoughts gone into the process of building a logo and it can often take various versions. I'll, I'll show some versions in a moment of how I eventually came to this particular logo. Just looking at my notes as well, logos should be clever but not complex. So hopefully that illustrates that I was trying to be clever in some ways of having a Z and a D in it but at the same time, it's not so complex that you couldn't go away and draw it. So a logo needs to be clever, not complex. And also just bear in mind that the, the time uh, that it takes to, to produce a logo uh, can vary, but really that's what you're paying for. You're paying for these variations, these ideas, some creativity on paper for you to look at, and then to go through your designer. So don't just decide to do something that's so obvious. For example, if your company was called, say, Looking, so that was the name of your company, or say it was a design company for clothing, and it was called Looking, then to just take the two O's in Looking or in Look and to put them as, as two um, eyeballs so that you have this kind of idea of, of like, um, let me just draw it. You'll see what I mean if I do that. So Looking, if we do that type of thing, it, it's just so obvious. Um, it won't get any marks at all when it comes to uh, how people view your company. So just try and avoid the obvious ones um, when it comes to looking. On the other hand, maybe you can take something that's a little bit obvious and do something a bit special with it. Often um, taking away and, and minusing the, the space around the logo can work well. So for instance, if you're a roofing company, Whereas you wouldn't want to just have it as just a, a roof on a house. You might want to perhaps take a couple of the walls away so that the shape there is evident of a roof. At the same time, obviously, you'd want to make sure that it wasn't um, so obvious that a child could have drawn it. So there's a real fine balance. When you see logos, you think they're simple. You think they're straightforward. Um, and they are. 
but to produce them can take quite a lot of effort and time. And that's why web designers charge to produce uh, logos based on times. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes, of course, is not to test the logo. So when you have a logo and you're happy with it, before you then sign it off with your designer, just go and show it to a few people, a few friends. Just say, what, what do you think of when you see this? Or what does this suggest to you when you see this logo? And listen to their feedback, because their feedback is very much what your visitors will be saying when they see your logo for the first time. And then, as we say, consistency with logos as well. So um, one of the biggest mistakes is the fact that people produce a logo and then they then take a different version of that logo and they change it slightly. And then they have another version too. And so on Facebook, you've got one version. On uh, LinkedIn, you've got another version. Uh, you've got on their sign outside their shop or their business is a different version again. Consistency. Your logo should be the same everywhere you go. Just think of it. Think of the companies like Mercedes. Think of McDonald's, we mentioned earlier. Think of Boots. Think of, um, say, some of the, the biggest companies in the world like IBM. Their letters, their fonts, their colours are consistent. And that would be exactly the same for you. Even if you're a small company, get the consistency there from the beginning and be happy with a logo that is simple, but at the same time could be hand-drawn by a child and you know then you've got exactly the right balance. Now, of course, if you still don't feel that you can do this, if you're not a designer, then of course I can offer my skills and my design. Just contact me, let me know. Or if you've produced a design recently based on some of the feedback I've given, let me know. Put it in the comments below because I'd like to hear from you. I'd like to see what you've managed to design. Uh, if you have a design and you just want me to perhaps give you a comment or uh, give you some feedback on it, then for free, I'm happy to do that. So uh, let me give a bit of my experience to you. I've been designing for 20 years. Uh, do subscribe because I'm producing more and more of these videos to help you benefit from my 20 years experience. I'm Zane from Zanet Design and hopefully you've enjoyed this video.